See, there's benefits, there's blessings in serving God. I've said this over the years. There's no other blesser except the Lord. Why leave Him? Why leave the Lord and go out into sin and serve sin? And when you serve sin, you know who sin's master is? It is Satan. Amen? There's blessings that in serving God, that God looks at. And because we serve Him, God goes before us and prepares the way. The Bible says when the enemy comes in, the, the Spirit of the Lord will raise a standard against him. That is the faithful. That is those that are prudent. That is those that are diligent to serve their God. Amen? And that's what we're looking at this morning is serving our God. Do you want to be blessed on the earth? The only way to be blessed, notice the Scripture says, it shall come to pass. Somebody says, well, I'm serving the Lord right now and I'm not enjoying the blessing. It shall come to pass. There's always a wilderness that you're going to go through. Why? Jesus went through the wilderness, didn't he? And he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. You and I are going through the wilderness because God wants to make you and He wants to mold you. He wants to make you into the man and woman. Amen. That He desires you to be. Moses went through the wilderness. And all of God's people go through the wilderness. But after the wilderness, glory to God. And if we're faithful in the wilderness, if we're faithful in the hard place, promotion cometh not from the east or the west, but from the Lord. Amen. Praise His holy name both now and forever. But I want you to notice the scripture tells us to observe and to do all His commandments. God wants you to do His commandments. I was uh, talking to a, a lady yesterday and she was telling me about somebody she ran into and, and they said they have a church at home. Both of them. Husband and wife. The Bible says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Amen. As much as we see the day approaching. Amen. God has commanded us to come together. Why? I need you. And you need me. We need one another. Praise God. I need the fellowship of the brethren. I need the prayers of the brethren. I need to mingle with you. Why? Because when we're all at corporately with the Spirit of God in me and the Spirit of God in you, there's power. Yes. Amen? And I need that. Yes. Glory be to God. Yes. And you need that. That's when many people fall away from the Lord is when they get out of church, they quit fellowshipping with, uh, you know, precious faith, like precious faith believers. And when that happens, it's not too long that we give, we, we start listening to this man and to the way that the world is carrying us and to instead of the Holy Ghost that is in us. Amen? And so we want to remember, remember God, put Him first in your life. Your whole being. Now look at that verse of scripture. And to do, God wants you to do his commandments. Let's go on reading. And all these blessings. Now I want you to notice the word of God. This is not put in the word of God to fill up empty space. This is in here for your benefit, for my benefit, for the child of God. These are reality. If they're not reality, well, we might as well throw the Bible away and get rid of it and go home. But I like what one, one scripture tells us. The King James tells us about the spirit of truth. Over there in John's Gospel, when Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. And he, the King James calls him the spirit of truth, which he is. He is the spirit of truth. There's no error about the Holy Ghost. Another translation says the spirit of reality. I like that too. Because God is reality. And what we're fixing to read and study today is reality. Amen? Blessed be. These blessings are reality. And I'm going to tell you on this, cursings are reality too. And I don't want to walk. I don't want to be in the curse. I want to live in the blessing. Amen? Praise God. Now look there at verse 2 again, Deuteronomy 28. And all these blessings in the plural, blessings shall come on thee, and I like this word, and overtake thee. If, but it's conditional. These blessings are conditional. It's got if. 
God is saying, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, that is His Word, and when He speaks to you, inside of you by His Spirit, blessed or blessed shalt thou be in the city. Many people fear when they go into the city. There's no fear about me. Wherever I go, I, I've gone into some bad neighborhoods. There's no fear. Why? I know who I serve. I said I know who I serve. <coughs> And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Now I want you to notice this. He's talking about the whole man, spirit, soul, and body here. And, and protection. You're going to see blessings of protection. You're going to see blessings of the body. You're going to see blessings of the finances. You're going to see blessings of the spirit and soul, which is peace. You know, in prosperity, not only in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm. Here, what we're fixing to read is blessings in every part of you. Amen. God leaves none out. Amen. But these blessings are all conditional. Yes, is it if you choose to obey the voice of the Lord thy God? Blessed shall be the fruit of the, thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, <coughs> and the flocks of thy sheep, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store, or it's financial, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Remember what the 23rd Psalm says? Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. God will even bless you with your enemies. Amen? The Lord, notice though, that next verse is the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. Where does blessings come from? From the Lord. Amen. Who are you going to serve? The Lord. Who are you going to hearken unto and obey? The Lord. Amen? Somebody, I don't understand it. I've heard it said in time past that serving the Lord is hard. No, it's not. It's easy. Just love Him. Is serving your husband and serving your wife hard? Not if you love them. Right. Amen? If you love Jesus, there's nothing hard about it. If you love Jesus, He has all of you. Glory be to God. Amen? And you heard me say, I'll say it again, nobody can do you like Jesus. Amen? Amen? Praise God. He loves humanity. Glory be to God. Well, that verse 8 tells us, The Lord shall command... I just love it when the Lord commands the blessings. Amen. I remember that centurion over there in the 8th chapter of Matthew. Just speak the word only. In other words, Lord, just speak. I love it when, when we find something in the Bible that says, And the Lord shall command. Why? Because you are His delight. He created you to fellowship with. You are His jewel. And He created you and I with free will and with choice of will. And I choose with my will, with my free will, with choice, I choose Him. Amen. Have I been through some hard places in life? Yes. And I told the Lord in the hard place. I spoke to Him and I talked to the Lord just like I talked to you. I don't like put on. And I said, Lord, I serve you now. And you see my heart now. When all hell is coming against me in every direction, I want you to know I'm not moved. I'm serving you. Whether I will or whether I die. And when God sees that attitude of heart, He will command the blessings. Amen. Amen. But so many people, they want the blessings. Well, they don't never want to go through no hard place. But God wants to see if you will serve Him in the hard place when it seems like, God, where you're at? And He's there all the time. You're being tested. And then after that wilderness experience, all of a sudden the Father speaks and He commands the blessings. 
And when the blessings come, I like to be around. Oh, thank you, Lord. And the Lord just brought this to me to tell you this. Even in the hard place, He said you're still blessed because He's watching over you. And He's keeping the enemy back. Amen? So see, you might not think God is around, but if you serve your God and you love your God, He's with you always, even until the end when you leave this physical body and you go home. And then you're forever in His presence there, just like you're in your... You're in His presence here, amen? Because there's nowhere that you can go to flee from Him. If you've been born again, He's in you. And those that have not been born again, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to serve Him. I want God to look down from heaven and say, Have you considered my servant Dennis? How He serves me. In the hard place, in the good place, I command the blessing over his life and into his life. Amen? And the blessing is already around us when we serve him. But it shall come to pass. Amen? Remember the first verse? It shall come to pass. You serve God, it's going to come to pass. And God sees you. And God knows where you're at. And what God is looking for is allegiance to him. Amen. God wants you in the hard place. And it's easy. It's easy to give ourselves to God in a good place. It's easy to say, Lord, I'm going to serve you now. The, the, oh, all the bills are paid. I got a lot of money in the bank. My health is good. And everything's going good. There's no troubles around. But there is a devil that's in this world. And as soon as enough, as soon as you have said that or thought that, look out. And in that, in the, in there is when we serve God. There is when we show our allegiance to our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God doesn't want lip service. Right. Amen. Right. He wants you to serve Him from your heart. Amen. Glory be to God. And I'm going to tell you this, my dear brother and sister. Nobody, nobody can love you and bless you like Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, verse 8 tells us, The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee, now look at here, and holy people unto himself. That's why we're so blessed, because we belong to him. Amen. Yeah. I don't understand. There's, there's, there's folks that won't give their heart to Jesus. Why not? He's the blesser. Yes, he Listen, I am, now this is a godly fear, but I'm with, that's why the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Right. Not like you fear a rattlesnake or something like that, but a holy awe, holy fear. Amen. Right. But I sure would want to lead Jesus. I mean, there is no way why I'd be, I'd be so fearful out there because I'm out from under blessings. I'm out from under protection. Let me tell you this, and I am not exaggerating because I don't like to exaggerate. That can lead, up, lead over there to half lies. But I have been in places that are not fear at all. I mean, I have been in hoods in places why I know that belongs to me. And if something was to happen, I'll just mention Jesus. Amen. What is it to fear that if something did happen physically, my next breath is heaven? Jesus said, don't fear them that can kill the body, but rather fear, fear him that can cast the body and soul into hell. Amen? With the holy awe that God is holy. Listen, listen, I've tasted of him. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. There's no going back. Was it to go back to sin and curses? So many people live under the curse these days in this world. They don't know Jesus and they live in a cursed world. But all they have to do if they have knowledge of Jesus Christ, come on over to the blessing of God. Jesus Christ is the blessing of God. And all the blessings of God in Christ Jesus are yes and amen. When you possess Jesus, you possess blessings. I am a man of great wealth. See, a lot of people, when they think of wealth, they just think of money, 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 money. 
but Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is worth more than all the money in the world. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man? We're talking about blessings this morning. And the only way to be blessed is in Jesus. And hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If he's not your Lord, well, then you have a problem. Amen. Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Is he your Lord or is he not? It's real simple. Amen. And you heard me say, I say before, because I want to please him and to do you good to do the same. And he'll bring it to you. Let me tell you, the Holy Ghost is real good at preaching a sermon to you. I mean, the Holy Ghost can preach a sermon to you when you lie on your bed or when you drive home when no one else can. You know he's in you. And you know when you do wrong, you know when the Holy Ghost is speaking to you about things. Amen? He's the best sermon preacher there is. And he's in your conscience. Your conscience is the voice of your spirit. If you've been born again and washed in the purest blood of all, the blood of the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're walking with him, your conscience is the same God. Those that have not been born again, those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, their conscience will permit them to do anything. Their conscience has been seared. That's why it doesn't bother some people on some of the things that they're doing. They don't have a conscience. That's why the Christian should immediately, as soon as you miss it, as soon as you say something or do something that's not Christ-like and your conscience gets your attention, that's the Holy Ghost in you, your conscience gets your attention, you need to repent right then because if you don't repent and you keep doing those things, you will sear your conscience till finally... You agree with the Holy Ghost, and the Bible says in Ephesians, Grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. There has been many people in churches across the nation that God has been preaching a sermon to them, inside of them, wanting to bless them, wanting to command the blessing in their lives, but they rebelled inside. And rebelled it is as the sin of witchcraft. The Bible tells us in the 15th chapter of 1 Samuel, I it is, Stubbornness and rebellion, get rid of it. Don't let it root. Some of them will be stubborn because of maybe what somebody's done in the family or what, some, or what somebody said or they didn't agree with. They get stubborn. That is as witchcraft. That is sin before God. Don't die with it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for His mercy. We're talking about God commanding the blessing. You want to be blessed financially? You want your body to be blessed? You want your spirit to be blessed? There ain't but one blessing that comes your way. And that is through one. Through one. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen? Blessed be His holy name both now and forever. Now look there at Deuteronomy 28. Verse 9. And the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. Hallelujah. I belong, I belong to him. I'm like what Paul said. The God of whose I am and whom I serve. As long as I'm approved in him. Lord bless those people, but I'm not taken up with that. Amen. That doesn't take my peace. Amen. That doesn't take my joy. Why? I'm consumed with him. I don't have time for childish things as that. Amen? And you don't need them. Just because somebody doesn't like you or says something about you, don't be carried up with it. That's childish. You just keep serving the Lord. As long as you know that you're pleasing God is the number one thing. As long as you know that you're pleasing Him. And if you're pleasing Him, you're okay. Amen? Amen. Because I'm going to tell you in here, listen to me, there's going to be times, everybody in here, you're not going to do everything to suit everyone. Are you listening? Amen. You're not going to, there's going to be things that, there, listen, I've said things and didn't know it. Then I have said things and knew it. I had to repent. And I've asked people to give me as, forgive me as well. But then there's things I've offended people and didn't know it. I thought. Didn't know it. 
So you got to understand, that's why we need love. That's why I need you to love me. And that's why you need me to love you. Amen. Amen. Why? Love covers a multitude of sins. Why? Because we sin a multitude on this earth. Amen. And we need one another to cover our sins. And thank God that Jesus, while we were undone, while we were enemies to the cross of Christ, while we were enemies to Christ, God sent His Son. And when we, come, when we came to God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through His Son, the answer was, your sins are no more by His blood. Amen? We want the blessings of God. We gotta walk, we're talking about the blessings this morning. We gotta, we got to bless people with our love as well. We have to forgive with our love as well. Amen? And that's all people. That's just not your friends. Jesus said if you salute yours, your friends, and if you love them that love you, what reward have you? Amen? Well, let's go on, ready. Look there. At verse 9 again. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments, see it's conditional, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in His ways. That means you walk in the Spirit. You walk in the Word of God. Even in the good times or the bad times. You keep walking. It might not feel like you feel the flesh. You don't want to keep walking that way. You keep walking that way. Why? Thank you, Lord. Because that's His way. God knows better than we do. We do not know better than God. Amen? God knows best. Look at verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. I want everybody to know who I stand for and whose side I'm on. Amen? Don't you want people to know whose side you're on? I want people to know. And they shall be afraid of thee. Notice that. What does it mean? It's because they have seen the terror of the Lord when God parted the Red Sea, all the plagues that plagued Egypt, they know that God went with them by night, amen, and then by the cloud at day and a pillar of fire by night. They know that God fed them all every day. Did you know they weren't supposed to keep Him? Because if they did, it rotted. God wanted them to know, I'm going to, those millions of people, Joanna mentioned them in uh, Sunday school this morning, how many millions of people that God delivered out of Egypt, God fed them. Daily. He wanted them to know that I'm your source. No man is your source. I'm your source. But we get so carried away of this physical realm and this physical world that will no longer be one day. Now there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And we're going to have some new bodies. But one of these days, this old one's going to be gone and burned up. Amen? <laughs> How about put our faith while we're here and please God says, God, I'm serving you and I'm going to serve you all the days of my life. And when God sees that attitude, notice I said attitude of your spirit, He sees that attitude, He will command the blessings. And there's many people in the United States and across the world that do not have peace in their souls and their minds. But God wants to give you peace. Listen, I sleep like a baby. I'm talking about sleep good. When good times and bad times watch, it's because I cast my care upon the Lord. I don't get involved in it. I let God worry with it. He don't worry, but you know what I mean by that expression. I give it to Him. I don't worry. Now, I got started off early this way as a teenager coming up under some good teaching. Bible teaching, New Testament teaching. And when I did, I just stayed with it. Somebody says, you don't worry. No, I don't mean I need to get a uh, plan of things and we have to talk about things. But I don't let them in man to consume me. Because your worry is not going to change anything except hinder God from moving. Because as long as you've got it, you're worrying about it. You're not letting God have it. Amen. Amen. And that's why the Bible says in Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. That's a little blind to some people. One translation says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Well, what am I going to do then, Brother Dennis? Well, we're going to practice that verse of Scripture. But in everything, how many things? All things. 
That's right. All things, everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God instead of worrying about it. Just take it. Just start thanking God for coming in the situation. Just start thanking God for meeting the need. Yeah, but it's not met yet. That's why you're going to thank Him. That's right. Come on. Amen. It's by faith. Amen? Amen. And then the blessing will come. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Amen. Look at verse 11. We're not through. We're still talking about the blessing. Who wants to be blessed? Amen. Amen. Rest of you, I'll take yours. <laughs> Amen. If you don't want it. Amen. Praise God. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Well, Brother Dennis, I don't believe the Lord wants us to have anything. Well, if you don't, I do. I, I, I believe it because it says it. Amen. Amen. Right. Make thee plenteous in goods. That's the blessing of God. The curse of the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy everything that you have. Your peace, your belongings, your finances, your health. I don't, we're not going to get into the curses today, but you go on reading. After these blessings, all these curses, you'll, well, we'll read the, the couple of verses. But let's just go on. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Now this is the Lord doing this, not you. This is the Lord doing this. This is the Lord God doing this. Oh, how I serve Him. I belong to Him. I belong to the Lord God. I belong unto the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. And the angels of the Lord encamp the around about me. Woo! Glory to yeah. God. Hallelujah. And they encamp the around about you yes. if you serve Him. Glory to Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm about to get happy here, friends. <laughs> Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Notice this. Make thee plenteous in goods and the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord swore to thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. That's what I want. I want the good treasure of the Lord in my life. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I think you need to read this at least once a day for 30 days and get your mind renewed with the word of God. Because some people just think that God's up there with a big giant glass watch waiting for you to miss it and to take something from you because they've been taught wrong. So many people in the church have been religiously brainwashed instead of all the New Testament taught. Amen. Uh, many people, many people have been religiously brainwashed instead of the Bible, instead of the Bible taught to them. Amen. No, I, I want what the Word of God tells me this morning. Amen. Praise His holy name. And the Lord shall open unto thee His good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in His season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Now that's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. I said that's a blessing, isn't it? Amen. Somebody says, I'm not there yet. Then just keep serving God. You're going to be there. Right. It shall come to pass. What did I read? Right. The first verse. It shall come to pass if thou wilt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. And to observe and to do all his commandments. Not some of you do them all. Then you will lend and not borrow. Amen? Amen. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Well, verse 13 and 14 tell us, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Right. Ooh, glory be to God. That don't make you smile or shout unless God let me go. I said it last night. I said it. I say it all the time. Thank you, Lord. I'm the head right. and not the tail. Why? I'm serving Him. I'm blessed. I'm the, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm blessed and not cursed. I serve the living God. Hallelujah. Make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. 
If, now hold on, it's conditional. It's conditional now. If thou, if if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe, and to what else? And to do them. The Bible says in the first chapter of James, be you doers of the word. Right. And not just hearers only. Come on. We got too many hearers of the word in the church today. I think we need to all do it. Amen? Come on. Amen. Now look at verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day. To the right hand or to the left, to go out to other gods to serve them. Somebody said, well, this is what I got to think about it. No, this is what God said about it. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. What did the Bible say? Amen? What does the Bible say? Now, I just want to, if you would, just look at a couple of these next verses, and then we're going to go on with the blessing. But it shall come to pass, notice this, it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments. Not some of them. And that's why to pay you to say, Lord, just like I was going to say earlier, it would pay you to say, Lord, is there anything? Because the Holy Ghost is the best preacher. If you would say, Lord, is there anything in me that you don't like? And if you would say that, he'll bring things up. Either one or he'll bring a list of things up. And if you don't hearken unto him, you will grieve him. But if you want to please God, listen to me, I'm talking about being blessed this morning. But if you want to please God, ask the Lord. Say, Lord, is there anything in me that you don't like or I'm not doing? Then the Holy Ghost will begin to preach to you. And when he does, obey him. And then when you obey it, you say, Lord, forgive me for this. Lord, forgive me for this. Lord, I repent. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm sorry. When you do that, then the Lord, that pleases Him. It pleases Him when we humble ourselves. But when we walk in pride and stubbornness and bitterness, I don't want to be in none of those places. The Lord resists the pride, the proud. He resists them. But he gives grace to the home. Amen? Amen? And if you do that, my brother and sister, the Holy Ghost will preach to you. He will tell you what you're doing, what you need to, that grieves him. Amen? If you really want to be blessed, now if you want to be blessed this morning, I'm telling you the truth. Nobody can bless you like Jesus. God loves you so much, he wants to command the blessing in your life. He wants to bless you in every, look what we just read. Is there anything that we just read, just got through reading, that leads your your leads you out in any area of life? Nothing. Anything that you need a blessing in, we just read. And more. And blessings only come from the Lord of hosts. That's right. Only from Him. Why would we not want to give all of our heart to Him? Why would we not to say, Lord, you love me so much, you're going to do this for me? You're going to bless me like this? Me? You love me. Lord, you have my heart. You have my all. And think about when we leave this world. Think about when we leave. Glory to God. I'm entering into a place of paradise and beauty and splendor. And God created all this for people that love him. He's got a mansion. He knows my desire. He made a mansion just that fitted me. You see, in your mansion... But he made something that just for me, oh glory to God. Why would I, why would anybody not want to serve the Lord? Amen. This is the best life. This is life serving our God. Amen. Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. I dreamed this. You know that message that I preach? Oh, I love the Holy Ghost. I love the Holy Ghost. You know that message I preached over there in 1 Timothy 4 8? For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. I dreamed that. A few weeks ago, I dreamed I was preaching that to people. That, it, that godliness, God will reward you 
not only in the next life, but if you serve him, godliness is profitable. How many of you know now? People always think about finances, but think about protection. He will supply your every need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all my needs. Amen? I, I preached that in my dream. I was sharing that. And I thought, wow, Lord, you must really like that. But it's, there's truth to it because the Lord just said, brought this to me here. All them blessings is to profit my people in this life. If they have lived godly. If they have served me. I've got blessings here in this world that we just read here in Deuteronomy 28. If you will serve God, what will overtake you? But now, if you don't want them overtaking you, just don't listen to all the counsel of God. Isn't He wonderful? He has my heart. And Lord, if, and, and Lord, if I'm doing something that's not right, I want Him to tell me. I says, Lord, I will, you know, I will repent. I mean, the Lord hasn't spoken to me in that. I have watched shows that I like. And the Lord, a number more than once, don't watch that no more. Well, there ain't no use to debate him about it. Only thing that I can say is I'm not going to do it or yes, Lord. Well, if he's my Lord, I hearken. Yes, Lord. Don't watch him again. Flesh wanted to watch it. Flesh said, I really like that. But there ain't no use talking or debating about it. God said, put that off. Hello? I want to walk in the blessing. Oh, thank you, Lord. I love the Holy Ghost. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Yeah. It's those little things that God speaks to you about that you don't obey, that you don't hearken, that grieves His heart. Right. It's the little things. Right. We know about the big things, murder or stealing or unforgiveness or hatred. We know about those ugly giant sins, but what about those little ones that God speaks to? Come on. Come on. There's what's there. Oh, thank you, Lord. Those are what spoils the blessings of God. You can do a lot of good things, but if you're, if it's those little things that God's speaking to you about that's keeping you from entering into the manifold blessings of God. It seems like people have said, it seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another. It's because it's those little foxes. It's those little things that you think there's not, oh, thank you, Lord. I like going with the flow. Amen. That you think that there's nothing wrong with it, there's nothing to it, but to God there is. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen or oh me. Amen. We're talking about blessings this morning. Do you want to live in the blessings? Because God has a whole storehouse for us. And if we live in the blessings, I guarantee you, you will be protected. There has been those that have had supernatural protection. I'm thinking of one guy, he couldn't get out of his car. Couldn't get out of his car. I heard this many years ago. This one just comes to me. Couldn't get out of his car. His car's on fire. He hit a, I think an 18 wheeler, if I remember correctly. Now, this is way back there. This is a number of years ago I heard this. And he was a Christian. He started quoting the word, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. He's trying to get out. Next thing you know, he's translated. He's out there with the crowd watching his car burn. He's translated. Somebody said, I don't believe that. I do. I'm a believer in all of that. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the miraculous. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in gifts and manifestations of the Spirit. I believe in all nine of them. And I believe in signs and wonders. Praise God. Amen. That's why we see them. That's why we'll experience them. That's why we'll have them. Because we believe in our God that He's a supernatural God. Amen. Everything that God does is supernatural. Right. You know, I was talking to you earlier, brother. You just tell me about your limbs. I've touched people in their limbs. Now, I'm not a healer. You understand that. I'm just telling you what I believe God. Because I believe God to do it, He's done it. I've touched people that's been in pain in their limbs for a number of years and years. And one of them, I think you remember, Carrie, over there at New Hope Assembly of God a number of years ago. You remember that guy, Carrie? They ain't been in church long. I don't know if you remember. But anyway, uh, he was in pain in his limbs for three weeks. As soon as I touched him, he said, it left. Well, I'm not a healer. I just believe in the healer to perform. But if we believe in the healer to perform, to perform, he will accommodate us. God will do for you what you believe him to do. And I believe in the blessings of God. And the only way they come is through obedience. 